the co-op board, and then now. Yeah, that's, that's what it. they're gonna do to him. That's exactly. That's why, I, cause if I was to talk to him and and, and to be sensible, I would just I would just put put those words in papers and just tell people why I have to do what I do, or I'll end up losing all around, and I'll do what I have to do. But I will keep talking about they did me dirty. They forced me to have to do this because they tried to take everything. Yeah, I think he's he's on that middle road trying to find a way to deal with it. But his conscience, I mean, he spent six months trying to, like, change the project, and he just feels like, you know, you, you only have one conscience. You, you know? have one conscience, I understand. <laughs> but don't let people, don't cut off your nose to spite your face. <laughs> yeah, he's trying not to, but yeah. it's hard for him, you know. I know. He's the one running the whole thing, and nobody in his building would even, you know, will even talk to him anymore. Yeah, I know, because they're getting one point, too. Yeah, but, you know, the, and then all, but that's all skewed, too, because... They also paid a lot too, so it's like everyone thinks, "Oh, they're getting a million dollars." But you know what? They paid six or seven hundred thousand. They're getting so they're getting six hundred. Get, you know, they, well, may, maybe that. Plus, you got to think that in the time that they bought their place, everything else went up a lot. So they can't really even buy the same thing except for close to what they're getting. Right. So essentially, they're really not getting anything except the hassle of having to move and maybe a little bit of money comparatively. But you know, the paper says, "Oh, they're getting a million dollars," but they're not getting a million dollars. You know, they yeah. have six hundred thousand dollar mortgages. Right. You know what I mean? Which is insane to begin with, but that's right. just the way it is. You know. Really insane. Uh -huh. <laughs> I um, would never afford that. Uh, and I, don't, I don't understand it myself. You know, I'm, I I can't see it. But, well, you see where I live. <laughs> I can't afford that. Yeah. Well, you know what the truth is? These are nice buildings. They're built well, and this is a nice yeah. apartment. You know. Yeah. You know, that's the, and that's why they're trying to, because I've also heard they're trying to force people out and stuff. Oh, they the people who have been moving moving out of these developments left and right. There, there's at least, on the average, four or five trucks coming in. It was like that uh, coming in a day. Now it didn't dwindle down to a week because I think they moved out. The first phase of people that they wanted out, that they're going to work on those apartments, I think they moved that first phase out. But those people won't be coming back to those apartments. Right. They will fix those apartments up. Those apartments will be rented at market value. Right. And then, as as we just have 42 individuals indicted uh, for cons for conspiracy or whatever it what whatever it was, now those are 42 families that will potentially be kicked out. Mm -hmm. So that's 42 more apartments. There's there's going to be other waves of arrest. There's going to be other issues where people get kicked out. It's going to be slowly but surely. They uh, give people that before you could ride bikes over here all you want. Now you get a ticket for riding a bike. You get a ticket for smoking a cigarette in the hallway. You get a ticket for if you have a cold and <coughs> you spit on the ground, you got a ticket. You get a ticket for everything that happens over here. And it's because of the area. The area is going up. And then there's a, a certain class of people moving in. The real estate's going up. And we know our law enforcement agencies protect property and they say listen this is some very expensive property here that they would like to do something with you have uh, the uh, federal government wanting to get out of subsidizing public housing you have a lot of situations my answer to it is that people are not going to be able to or the uh, management is not going to be able to afford to continue to take on these these properties they're going to have to new york city housing is going to have to give it out to private management private management is going to have to raise the rents so my answer to all that is is to tell the people you need to start going to the classes you need to get the first option to manage your own developments cut, cut them up into clusters of three and begin to manage your own housing and begin to buy your housing and even if the same situation, even if there comes a point where here I live here and I can't afford to live here no more because of the how high it's going up, at least when I leave, I can leave with something. As a renter, if I leave here, I don't leave with nothing. As an owner, at least if I leave here, I can leave with something. So my thing for the future, for the people who live in public housing, because I'm also the statewide leader of a national organization called Infront. Infront is the only national organization for public housing residents. And my thing for the future is that public housing residents need to begin
to get some ownership. What happens with ownership? A lot of things happen with ownership. People start feeling better about themselves. People start taking care of what, what they own better than mm -hmm. they take care of what does not belong to them. Mm -hmm. So it changes a lot of dynamics in people. And plus, at the same time, it begins to let that burden that the uh, state, that the city, and that the federal government has to take care of these development. It, it kind of takes them away from that burden and it allows a smooth transaction. Right now, the transaction is not going to be smooth if you have over over 5,000 units of housing and you start telling these people they got to go. That's a problem. And we're not just talking about 5,000 units. We're talking about across New York City, across New York State, across the United States, this is what's happening. I went on a trip to Vermont and other, and other places where there used to be housing, I seen a baseball field. Where there used to be housing, I seen a parking lot. In Jersey, where there used to be high-rise buildings, I see uh, two-story buildings, townhouses. So it's not far-fetched to say that a few years from now, you may see uh, people coming in here knocking down these buildings. A few years ago, the question was saying, asked, is people going to have to move? And housing came down and said, nobody's going to have to move. Nobody's going to have to move. And today, what we see, we see people moving. We see people moving to the tone of 1,700 families. So for, for them to say a couple years, nobody's going to have to move. And then a couple years later, 1,700 families going to have to move. And we know for a fact that all this design and all this development and everything that they're about to do wasn't created in a vacuum. It took at least two years, if not more, to come up with it. So when they came to these people in meetings and said that they wasn't going to have to move a couple years ago, they just bold-faced lied. So, and that's part of the whole change of the area. We have a, a, a center on the avenue. It was the Ingersoll Tennis Association had their office in there. And it was the community center for Ingersoll housing. They said, we, we talked about we needed to develop. We needed to look better. We needed a, a full court basketball court. Got money. We went out, talked to people to get money, politicians and everybody. They got the money for the development. They done built two high-rise buildings. They done built Metro Tech. They done built the court building. They building the building next to uh, the other court building next to uh, the Marriott Hotel. They done built the uh, court build. This project started before all those high-rise buildings, and they're done. And this project is not still done. Why is this project not done? Because they want to keep the process slow. Because as they moving people out, they want to ensure that... We hurry up and move a lot of people out. When we open that back up, it's not going to be under the Ingersoll uh, Association. It's not going to even be under the housing. We're going to bring a private entity in. We're going to be building houses across the street. And it's what they're really telling people. That we're building this and we're taking our time because the people who this is being built for is not here yet. And, and they're changing the, the dynamics uh, of the community like that. And... It, it's it's a lot, but it's all tied in. It's all tied in with all the other development that's going on. Mm -hmm. If all the other development wasn't going on around here, this wouldn't be happening. And that's why we're so strongly saying that we want jobs. Because the truth is, if we don't get jobs making $65 an hour, $48 an hour, how could we afford to stay here? We can't. Because we understand that this development is changing things, it's changing the economic situation in the community. One lady that lived right over top of me, she moved because she wanted to. Because this building, most of the people in this building don't have to move. But she moved because she wanted to. So she moved right across the bridge. She's a friend. And she, was, she wasn't telling me, but she told somebody else. And they told me, on, on the avenue uh, right here, when you go buy a two liter soda, two liter soda usually cost you a hot one, dollar forty nine. Uh, since some stores, if you go to Associates, ninety nine cent in Associates for a two liter soda, a hot one. She says she went over there to buy a two liter soda hot, and it cost two seventy nine. 
She said her moving out of this area into another area affect how she could spend her money and she doesn't have a vehicle. So it ain't like I could go drive and go out of my area anytime I want to buy something from the store. So she said it affects how her economic level is now. And I said in a minute, don't worry because if you just stayed here with all the different economic levels that's moving in here, this higher, this higher than the ones now. For instance, on Myrtle Avenue right up here, I used to could go rent a room and mm -hmm. live there because when I was young yeah, and lived with you, my... You dropped the, uh, the mic fell. Sorry, because I lost the sound. When, when I was living with my mother in 87 Miami, why? and I... And I wanted, to, I wanted my own apartment. I went right up the block, and I rented me a room for when I first started renting them. I rented a room for uh, seventy-five dollars a week, and that same room, right now, that I rented for seventy-five dollars a week, they, oh uh, man, it's crazy. They want a thousand dollars a month for that same room that I used to rent for seventy-five dollars a week. They want a thousand dollars a month, and that's the difference of how this area is changing. When I was young, I owned a couple of houses right around in the area around Fort Green Park because I was on the community board, uh, was youth committee and all that. And I ended up knowing about some houses they was giving up for a dollar. And when we did the dollar thing with a couple of the houses, because we was in construction now, we're going to try to fix them up. Well, we didn't We didn't get the chance to fix them up. You know, they go right back if you don't do nothing with them. They go back to the program. So they went back. But, man, that same building that we spent a dollar for, it's worth a million dollars, worth $800,000. These are the type of prices that's on these buildings that I used to own for a dollar. So I know the difference. Now, let me go try to buy a building in this area for a dollar. Non-existent. And, and that, that's just a, a matter of 20 years. When uh, a couple years ago, there was a guy selling a building. I'm saying well, about 10 years ago, there was a guy selling a building. And he wanted, he wanted $150,000 for his building. That same building that he wanted $150,000 now go for two, two and a half. And it's, it's a relatively big building. He was, he was a motivated seller at the time. But dang, to, to go from somebody selling a building for 150000 to two and a half in 10 years, it's unbelievable. But that's how this area has changed.